All right, this is first grade, module four, lesson 12. And in this lesson, students are gonna be adding tens to a two digit number. Now, they're not really gonna be using that standard algorithm. Instead, uh, they're gonna be using quick tens. They're gonna be using the place value charts. They're gonna be using the arrow method to uh, represent and notate the addition that's going on. For example, let's say we were going to do uh, 13 plus 20. So the idea is we want students, when they see 13 plus 20, we want them to recognize, amongst other things, that 13 is uh, a quick 10 plus three ones, and then that 20 is two more quick 10s, and then using the commutative property, we can move those quick 10s around and all of a sudden we see that we have the answer 33. We have three tens plus three ones. We can notate that using the arrow method, 13, and then we have the plus 20 here as part of the arrow, and that equals 33. So there's a variety of things that we, uh, ways that we want our students to be interacting with the mathematics. At this point, we are not aiming for the standard algorithm. So let's get started. So it says fill in the missing numbers down here plus over here in the number bond uh, to match the picture. So we can see that we've got two tens, so that's why we have 20. We have a 10 and three ones, so there's our 13. And the idea is we can count and we can see that we have three tens and three ones, so the answer is 33. Now how might that look in a number bond? Well, we might write it like this, 20, 13, and 33. Now, keeping in mind the commutative property, we could have put the 13 here and the 20 over here. We could have swapped these, but really the 33 needs to go up on top. All along, keep in mind that we could also be using the quick tens method. So there is our 20 using the quick tens method. And then here is our 13 representing the quick ten, or using the quick tens method. And then, of course, we can use the commutative property to move these things around. And we could say, oh, 20 plus 13 is equal to 3 tens and 3 ones, or 33. So don't forget about that quick tens method as well. I'm going to save this problem for you parents and teachers to solve. Now here it's just more of the same, only they're removing some of the scaffolding and they're, they're making it a little bit more abstract by putting the numbers in a, a place value chart. So draw using the quick tens and ones. So I'm going to represent this down here. I'm going to put 17 plus 10 down here. And using the quick tens and our ones. So to first model the 17 down here, 17, we're going to have a quick 10, and then we're going to have seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's our 10 and seven ones. And now to model the 10, it's a quick 10. Boom, done. So when we use the commutative property and start moving things around, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get two tens and seven ones. So we can see that, let's see, 17 plus 10 is equal to two tens and seven ones, and the way we would write that is 27. So what would our number bond look like? Well, our number bond might look like this. And I'm going to let you, as parents and teachers, solve this problem on your own. Now here, the arrow notation, a lot of people kind of are confused about this and like, why do we have to do this? Well, it's a way to, scaff to teach how to scaffold the mental thinking, the mental math so that students ultimately will be more proficient at doing mental math as well. So it, it, it helps us uh, focus on place value. It allows us to 
ultimately down the road students are going to decompose numbers that are being added so that they can use the arrow method in multiple steps to be able to solve some really fantastic problems um, entirely mentally if they choose. So if we wanted to use the arrow notation, the idea would be it's going to look like this in a more standard form, right? So 19 would be modeled with a quick 10 and nine ones. So there's our nine ones, there's our quick 10. And then the 10 would be another quick 10. So using the commutative property, we can see that 19 plus 10 gives us two 10s and a nine. So our, our answer is 29. Now, that's what we would write. It doesn't ask. But if we wanted to, we could have shown this in a number bond like so. This one is more of the same, so parents and teachers, I'll let you to solve that one. And the last kind of representation, let's see, we've done quick tens, we've done arrow method, and now we're returning to those dimes and pennies to show yet another representation of how we can um, show addition. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this clump of money and apply it to this table. And I see that we have one ten and eight ones. And then over here, I see that we have, let's see, two tens. And we have no ones. So what is our total way over here? Well, how many tens do we have? We have one, two, three tens. So we, we have three tens. And then how many ones do we have? We still have these eight ones. So 18 plus 20 is equal to 38. Keep in mind, there's lots of other ways we could have shown this. We could have shown this with the quick tens method. We could have shown this with the arrow method. There's just lots of choices. Uh, parents and teachers, please allow your students the opportunity to talk about their favorite method and, and share their understanding of why they like one method better than another. Ultimately, we want students to kind of at least appreciate all the methods, even though we know they're going to come up with their own, they're going to settle on their own favorite method. And that wraps up first grade module four, lesson 12, where we are adding tens to a two-digit number.